So how do you design learning? You've got to start by answering the question, how does learning work? If you don't know how it works, you really can't design it. So here's how it works, effective context. Um, you start off as a child, you have kind of gross reactions to the things in the world around you. Um, as you become an adult, those reactions become micro-reactions. They become very sophisticated, very differentiated. But the key principle here is you do not remember the experiences that, that happen to you. What you remember is your reactions to experiences. And you use those reactions to experience to conjure those experience up, which is why our memory is so unreliable. And yes, you guessed it, the times when our memory is reliable tend to be highly charged emotional times. If our minds didn't work this way, we couldn't understand poetry. Um, I wandered lonely as a cloud. Is that a lonely cloud? Yes, it is. A computer doesn't encode information that way. It doesn't have a reaction to that cloud. We do, and it enables us to make comparisons which are poetic or creative or semantic. So basically, it gives us two situations in a learning context. One where there's something which has strong effective context. In other words, things that we really care about. So you know, it might be celebrity gossip. The majority of people don't really care very much about learning theory, um, so they'll forget that very quickly if you talk about it. You might be different. You might not care about celebrity gossip. But what people care about really directs their learning. What they have a strong emotional reaction to will determine what you remember. If you take a train journey every day, for example, that will become pretty boring and routine. But if a fight breaks out on the train, that's something you'll remember, and that's something that will feature in your conversations about it. So what does this mean for learning? Well, basically, there are two kinds of things that you can do in learning. You can build resources where people care about something. You know how this works. If you really care about something, you'll look it up on Google and you get the answer. and It will be text. And it never occurred to you that text was a problem or that you needed a 40 minute interactive module. If you actually really care about doing something, then a checklist, a guide, something really simple that you can use um, is what you need. But in organizations, we often encounter things that people don't care about, that we want them to care about. And in that case, you have to build experiences, design experiences which actually make them care and therefore make them learn. So those are things like simulations or storytelling or actual practical real life experience. So really, there are only two things to do in learning. You can either design resources where people care about something or design experiences where they don't. How do you know which to do? You spend time with the audience. If you map those things with the audience, you'll understand where you need to build a resource and where you need to build an experience. How do you do that? Well, here's the process. 5DI, define, discover, design, develop, deploy, and iterate. So you start by defining the outcome in terms of results, not learning objectives. For the same reason I mentioned before, learning objectives don't really have much to do with results. You can learn something but not actually apply it. And equally, you can change your behavior without learning things. Just look at the, the fitness apps that people have and the trackers. So define the outcome in terms of the results you want to achieve. Then the critical phase, the one that isn't in Addy, is discover. Really kind of discover, spend time with the audience doing audience analysis, running research groups, understanding what's impacting their performance. Because only if you do that can you build the right things, the right resources, the right experiences. So design is the stage that follows on from that. Think of helpful stuff. Typically it's just about providing helpful stuff to people to support their performance. Resources, not courses. Develop in a user-centered way. Digital designers partnering with practitioners. Involve your audience in the process. Design with the audience, for the audience. And then deploy an MVP. MVP is minimum viable product. It's a recognition that you're not going to get it right first time. There is no stakeholder sign-off process that's going to ensure that. Instead, deploy something that's 80% there and then iterate it. Involve your audience in the feedback and improve it. So how do you do the audience analysis? Well, based on what I've just said around effective context, this is what you need to know. What are the concerns that underpin learning? If you're a child and it's your first day at school, how you show up to other kids will be really important and that will govern the kinds of things that you learn about. So understand the concerns and the tasks. Get people to list what are their main concerns, what are the main tasks they're having to do and then build resources that actually support them to get those things done. And that underpins the popularity of this approach. It's not about doing things with whizzy technology. It's about actually doing helpful um, stuff. So um, the design phase, so you've done some discovery of the audience, you then come up to design. What kinds of helpful stuff can you design? Well, here's just some of the things. It's not just all short videos and infographics. There's a whole host of things that you can do. Life hacks, 
um, task specific checklists, FAQs, one page guys, how to videos, top 10 tips, 20 second video tips, case studies, and then there are much more complicated things you can do. You're going to Tinder for learning, or user generated content, or simulators, or messages to your future self. There's a whole host of things, but you need to ensure that they're not gratuitous, that they actually help people um, with whatever it is that they're trying to achieve. And you'll only know that if you've really talked to them and involved them. So at the end of this process, you go on then to develop some of these things and iterate. But the key shift is it's not about knowledge transfer. A lot of learning is underpinned by this idea that somehow the objective is to kind of force knowledge into people's heads. It's about organizational usability. You'll be familiar in your everyday life with Apple products. They're just really usable. They make it easy for you to get stuff done. And yet, within your organizations, we make it fantastically difficult for people to get simple things done. And we wonder why engagement levels and productivity are sliding. So our problem is not knowledge transfer. Learning is not pointed at pushing content into people's heads. Instead, it's all about helping people with this problem, that the world is often really poorly designed and people are doing different things as a consequence. How do we solve that? Well, we solve that by talking to them, understanding what they're trying to do and redesigning things to make it easier for them to achieve what they're trying to do.